So I just got done watching The Walking Dead, Season 11, Episode 10, New Haunts. Um, I will say for my spoiler-free part of this video at the beginning, I give it a 10 out of 10. It was great. I'm sure some people may call it a slower episode. I don't know. But everything, it was just so filled with such good character interactions, uh, dialogue, just interesting new scenarios. They were really... Uh, creative in the ways that they put the characters in this new Commonwealth setting and just how they interacted and all of it felt so natural and so entertaining uh, and just fun to watch you know I, I was worried because of course we're missing a lot of comic storylines and that that this storyline would feel empty as it kind of already did in the comic anyway but so far I'm really intrigued and it feels really jam-packed with a lot going on but not really like um, I don't know like messy either just too much it's just it's the perfect blend uh this episode was and i hope that they keep it up you know the first half of season 11 i'm just gonna put that in the branch of the COVID episodes that wasn't season 11. season 11 we'll say started uh with the last episode which was also a 10 out of 10 for me uh like i said as was this one so hopefully they keep it up just uh yeah so or just gets even better you know that would be amazing uh so let's see the intro right off the bat I, I was just like man i'm already hooked this episode is already great for me uh, because so we get daryl uh uncle daryl this this man deserves so much child support uh from michonne and rick or something you know because he's just taking care of their kids uh for all this time and uh doing an amazing job at it so um we see him taking judith and rj uh nice to see him pop in every now and again because he's a big character you know that's rick's biological son um, unless Michonne was, you know, uh, right? But no. Um, so it was so great to see him take him through the haunted house, which wasn't like a haunted house with ghosts and stuff. It was actually like zombies, you know, which is a little bit, you look at it, you're like, that's a little distasteful, a little too traumatizing probably, uh, for some people like Daryl and they're probably having a reaction. Like I would be like, whoa, back up. Are you actually a zombie? What's going on? But I guess somebody explained to Daryl, you know, it's safe. It'll be okay. But RJ, you know, he's not experienced with the walkers that much. So he's getting kind of freaked out and at that point daryl's like you know good good old uncle daryl he's like you know okay man that's enough you know but he gives him a fist bump he's cool about it just love that interaction you know it just flows so well something that fear the walking dead just lacks so hard everything just feels so stiff for the most part it's gotten better not that i'm comparing the shows um and even walking dead felt this way you know through season seven and eight at some points um angela kane can't express enough how well she's done with the dialogue and the character interactions you know um how natural they felt you know since she's been back on uh yeah it's just great so yeah that was nice seeing him in the haunted house reminds me of something from the comics too where uh this is a spoiler but uh what's his name uh herschel jr like puts the walkers on display like as a sideshow attraction not quite like that but it's what we made me think of so it was cool and cool of course to see the halloween setting being brought in because this was actually something in the comics um that they did once they got to alexandria but they didn't do it in the show where they have carl celebrating halloween in the community um so that was nice to see that brought to life because sometimes they'll skip over stuff in the comics but they'll come back to it luckily at uh some point um so yeah we got to see that that was great they even have the halloween music in there um yeah and uh little side note you notice jerry is dressed up as a tiger of course uh uh for halloween because you know for shiva so that was just a nice little easter egg in there um sorry you might hear some talking in the background my girlfriend is playing video games talking and whenever she wears her headphones she kind of talks loud because they're block out when you can't hear yourself talking you're going to talk louder so that's what that is but okay jerry as shiva nice you know just layer putting layers in there to where you know you get enough stuff you're like man this is just they really thought this through so and then you get Carol back to her old ways, her baking ways. She's baking cookies. Uh, so that was cool seeing her back in that, of course. And, um, yeah, so there's a one-month time skip, which I'm glad. You know, we don't need to see more people like another scenario, like with Alexandra, where they're being introduced to all this, kind of taking it all in. We already saw Ezekiel, Princess, all of them go through that, you know. So we don't need to see that again. So we do a one-month time skip, which is good. Um... <laughs> Daryl has a line where they're a little self-aware. They're like, uh, yeah, this is going to work. And Daryl's like, well, we always got to do something to make it work. Because they've been to so many different communities that they've had to do stuff to, you know, get by or change stuff to get it to work for them. Um, they're kind of self-aware. Like, it's like we're in a TV show or something. Uh, <laughs> but no, I like that. 
And then, yeah, the kid that was dressed up as Mercer, I like how Mercer's kind of like a celebrity, you know, because he's uh, just kind of a, uh, just a badass, right? So he has that celebrity status, so a kid dresses up for him for Halloween. Um, Daryl and Connie had a great interaction in this at the beginning. Connie's on her journalism uh, thing. You know, like I said, they thought out how they could make most people fit into an interesting place due to how their characters were before. And, um, excuse me, and... Um, so the Daryl and Connie romance looks like it's probably back on because I don't know why they would put this line in here if not But Daryl's kind of watching her walk away. I don't know. He's checking out her ass or something or Just you know, I don't know what he's doing. He was watching her awful close and Carol noticed and uh, And Carol was like, you know, you should ask her to dance or something like that Of course Daryl's not gonna fucking do that, but uh, you know, Carol notices. Okay, he's interested And so yeah, it seems like they're building that up continuing which they should because those characters just have such great uh, charisma and inter interactions, I think so yeah, really, really was happy about that and surprised after last episode when they kind of had the buddy shove, you know, with uh, Connie. Um, anyway, um, let's see. So yeah, it seems like there's going to be an uprising in this overall for the plot of the, the money system, which to be honest, I don't know if I see an entire problem with. I didn't really in the comics. If they don't have the opportunity, now this is like a big conversation you could probably have, but if they don't have the opportunity to build up and earn income and things like that, just like everybody else, like if there is an equality issue, then that's a thing. But I haven't seen an equality thing. It seems more like, you know, Rosita and Daryl, for instance, can get to where they're making decent money. They just have to work for it first, you know. And, uh, you know, I think systems for, you know, for everything has always survived on some type of currency for the most part. So why would this be any different? It all depends on how they handle it. So far, I haven't really seen them handle it too poorly. People just saying it's kind of handled poorly. I don't know. Uh, you know, but, but yeah, so, um, let's see. Uh, I like, uh, Ezekiel with Shiva's chain, you know, just a nice callback to Shiva again, giving it to, um, giving it to, uh, Jerry's son, um, who was using it for his Halloween costume, um, for, for Jerry, I guess he was chaining Jerry around, uh, they had a nice little line, he was like, yeah, be careful with, with it though, when I give it to you, or he told Jerry, because it is a chain, you know, he could be doing some weird shit with the chain, um, but yeah, so, I like the nice callback to Shiva there, and I guess Ezekiel's kind of thinking he's dying, so he's giving away all of his stuff, he gives away the chain, and then to Carol, he gives away his, his, uh, box of stuff for Henry as well, um, you know, since they had Henry together and that was kind of a painful thing for Carol. Um, let's see. So Daryl, uh, <laughs> wanting to pair up with Rosita and the whole basic training thing, of course, cause they're going to, they know each other's moves and they work well together for all this time. Uh, but Mercer didn't allow it. It was nice seeing Mercer and Daryl kind of <laughs> interact, right? Two badasses kind of not really button heads, but just kind of having to establish like, you know, one another and, uh, you know, respect one another, and Mercer kind of gives them the heads up, like, listen, you know, uh, you kind of got to fall in line around here, which we do see Daryl kind of listen to later on, which we'll get into, um, but I like Daryl's little awkward line, Norman Reed really uh, had a lot of nice moments this episode, um, you know, he, he had an awkward moment with the guy who he's paired up with, he, like, reaches out to shake his hand, and that's not Daryl, so he's like, you know, all right, nice to meet you, buddy, like, gives him a pat or something, uh, just funny, you know, because Daryl just doesn't do the whole people thing, um, Still hasn't fucking changed his clothes, cut his hair. Come on, dude. Um, anyway. Oh, he was like, what's up, Jake? What's up, Jake? Um, yeah. So. Uh, the, the, the scenes in the basic training was great, you know, even though I would say people would say this wasn't a lot of action episode. Like I said, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And uh, they even, they packed it all into this basic training scene, though, with, uh, got a cool kill with Rosita breaking the walker's leg off. They always figure out a way to do a kill that they haven't done before. Uh, stabs the tibia or whatever that bone would be, maybe not the tibia, I don't know. But stabs it into the, uh, into the walker's head, awesome. And I do like how they put into some thought, you know, how Rosita would work in a, team building exercise the the two people one knife type deal and how daryl you know he kind of just like i don't need the knife here take it and he's just picking up rocks and stuff or bashing the zombies into into things you know uh because he's fine on his own so i like that as well oh, God, no. just the differences oh, in the God. thought he's and the fighting style out. um i like that they established that judith doesn't really understand money either i don't think they kind of dig into that i think they could do a little bit more with that but um she doesn't really know what an allowance is. You can just kind of tell, you know, because she 
grew up in a time where money was not important at all, you know, um, up until right now. Uh, so it's kind of interesting seeing her kind of around her friends, you know, feeling a little bit insecure. Or I don't know about the money because, you know, she just, like I said, she just doesn't know. So that's interesting um, as well. Uh, and Princess digs her friend's outfit because Princess is dressed up like a princess on Halloween, right? So, um, yeah, you don't have to have these little side characters do much, you know, but it's just nice to see, like, Princess have a few interactions here and there, you know. And, um, you know, you don't have to have them have some big plot for the episode, but just show us a little bit what's going on. You know, it feels more like a Game of Thrones type episode back when Game of Thrones was good, let's say that, uh, where you get to see more of everything, you know. Back in season seven, eight, these seasons could have benefited from that seeing a little bit of everybody i think we got to almost everybody except for of course eugene and and maggie and and uh yeah but that's fine anyway because we we had enough you can't you can't show everybody but um and judith asking daryl for the allowance was such a cute scene you know uh especially daryl probably growing up did not have an allowance at all um so you know but he handled it well he was like whenever i get my job going i'll, I'll get you an allowance you know uh, like i said poor daryl needs child support or uh, uh or yeah needs to get paid child support or something uh yeah so that was nice uh, and, and again, just a little nice dialogue in here. So Rosita tells, uh, uh, Daryl, he was like, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a hate smile Sebastian just gave you. Um, but I kind of skipped ahead. So I missed, uh, so we get a little bit with Sebastian, Pamela's son. Um, so he's kind of flirting with Rosita being a dick when they're bringing the weapons out of the bag. He's kind of playing around with them, you know, acting all cocky. I wish they would have had one of Rick's weapons in the bag and Daryl would have been like, leave that one alone, not that one. He did, he did do that for like a katana that I think Michonne made for Judith maybe. But um, I would have liked to see like Rick's gun or something in there, right? Just a little, little way to have him around. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, Sebastian's trying to prove himself to Pamela, Pamela sees, and, and, uh, Daryl kind of falls in line later on and, and, uh, gives Sebastian the prisoner, which I like, you know, that Daryl's not going full on uprising, you know, him and Rosita both kind of fall in line in this episode when it's smart, you know, and I like that versus them trying to be Billy Badass, you know, all the time when it's not really going to benefit them in any way, um, you know, kind of biding time or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh. So yeah, we'll probably see Daryl and Mercer have some sort of uprising later on. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, there was a nice scene with with uh, Princess and uh, Mercer too, where Mercer, you know, he doesn't really care about the celebrity status or all of that, the fame. Uh, so he kind of just pulls a badass moment. He's he's probably he's probably definitely getting some right. Uh, but he lets uh, Princess through and kind of takes her in as his date, you know, because they have a romance in the comic. Hopefully it'll be better than it was in the comic than in the show. It seems like it's probably going to be right now because uh, the two actors, I think, do a great job. Um, but yeah, I didn't like it in the comics. It was just kind of strange. Uh, Princess was just fucking crazy and abused and uh, cried on Mercer's shoulder about it. Um, so yeah, but anyway, um, there was a line... And I, but I do like the cameras. They're all walking through like celebrities taking pictures of Mercer. That's just so weird to see in The Walking Dead, but so cool, you know, um, something that we've never really seen before. I will say though, a complaint that I kind of have, but it's kind of starting to get better. You know, we just need an aerial shot of the Commonwealth. It feels a little bit small in some places like Woodbury, but you know, at times like the party, I guess it didn't really feel that way. Eh, you know, it just needs to feel a little bit yeah. bigger. And you know, you see all the hospital records and stuff. Um, they got 157 people just waiting to get surgery. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so we get a line from, uh, uh, Pamela saying, I'm the governor. I wanted somebody to look and be like, oh hell, you know, not another governor or something, but there's nobody really to say that. Maybe Daryl was around at the prison time with the governor. Uh, who else? I think they're all gone. I mean, Maggie, but Maggie's not there. So, but yeah, I kind of missed opportunity, but they kind of had to miss it, you know. Um, Pamela, you know, I think her actress does a good job. Oh. She's getting interviewed by Connie, you know, and kind of giving the political answers, answers, you know. Uh, and then uh, as well, whenever the guy starting the uprising at the party gets the knife, she handles all that really well with her dialogue, you know, just like a diffusing the situation well. Uh, but, you know, it just all feels like fake bullshit stuff to say, you know. And, uh, yeah, and again, I love Mercer as the head of security. He's just an awesome character. And just the short time he's been around, you know, that's really rose up there for sure. 
um, <clears throat> Daryl kind of becoming a cop, you know, he's arresting the guy, and like I said, he gives him to, to Sebastian, but it's just so weird to see, like, Daryl, you're pulling like a Rick right now, being a constable, the cop, you know, just never would have saw you as compared to how you were, you know, at the start of the series, you know, now you're the cop when you used to probably get arrested by cops, you know, it's kind of crazy, um, but yeah, like I said, Daryl kind of handled the situation, handled it well, and then, like I said, Ezekiel is giving his stuff away, Carol's trying to uh, get him moved up on the surgery list. I liked her little side plot there being concerned about him because she can kind of tell, of course, they've been in a relationship. So, you know, he says he's fine. Uh, you know, nice, happy, positive guy, Ezekiel. But you can tell he's probably, he was having a cough or something and maybe that that uh, that tumor or lump is, is sore. I think we can assume it's a cancer. Uh, but yeah, he's, the problem is, I think by the time he would be able to get the surgery, the cancer would probably have progressed to a point where it would be too late, you know, so that's why she's trying to get him moved up, uh, which is nice, and they have the nice, uh, they have the nice scene at the end, I, I, again, just little hints of dialogue, they just sprinkle in and work so well, where, uh, he says, like, you, uh, you always took the big glass, you know, because you look at it, Carol has a big glass of wine, and Ezekiel just has a little bit, you know, so it's just, you know, it's just nice, um, and then I love, uh, the way they have, uh, Judas record that she really wanted the song eat the rich by motorhead Daryl was like yeah, it's good music or whatever Because uh, he yeah. he got her the record player, you know, because he said he'd give her an allowance and he followed through right uh, great great uncle Daryl um, <clears throat> But uh, yeah, so so uh, I like the way that song plays over the final montage whenever they have like a badass SWAT scene with Rosita she busts into the into the uh, guy who's doing the uprising and sees, oh, it might be a bigger problem than what we thought because they have the paintings and stuff all over, uh, you know, uh, against the Commonwealth. So, um, yeah, there's a lot in this episode. I think that was pretty much it. Covered it all. Like I said, just loved it. It was basically me just going over scenes that I love. Um, you know, not too many t complaints other than the Commonwealth. Just kind of feels small right now. He's got it. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, even a little bit of side stuff with Mercer, you get to see him just feel a little bit insecure. Or, I mean... Um, you know what What's I his mean? name? See, I can't even remember his name, but that's that's ever that's his problem. Nobody knows his name, Lance. Uh, uh, Lance feeling insecure to Mercer. Just so many things set up that have good potential for payoff. I'm thinking. Um, yeah, it was just an awesome episode. Ten out of ten for sure. And uh, I always enjoy Angela King's commentary at the end of the episode because you can tell uh, that she doesn't just. I think I think Scott Gipple wrote for Walking Dead half with passion. Uh, or maybe just for a job, but he half did it well, but then the other half was kind of like a political, um, kind of, you know, uh, thought of it as like a job, like what can I do to get more viewers, draw them in, you know, so it came across dry in some places, where you can tell Angela Kang really has her heart into the characters and invested, um, you know, I just get that vibe off of her, so yeah, she's, she's done great with this, and the people, whoever working under her, I'm sure, um, so then, and what else, so, Next episode, we'll get the Stephanie reveal. We'll get more Eugene, you know, see what's going on there. Uh, <clears throat> so that'll be um, that'll be interesting to see what's going on with the, the fake Stephanie. You know, I have no idea where that could be going. And then in addition, something I wanted to mention that I just heard about tonight. I got it in my a few videos in my YouTube recommended. We could be seeing Rick return um, in the final episodes of Walking Dead. Uh, Andrew Lincoln is in Atlanta um, I don't know if he's filming, but he's been seen, of course, hanging out with his buddy Norman Reedus, very near to the Walking Dead set, apparently. Uh, a photo was taken of the two of them. Um, so, you know, take that what you will. Uh, but man, if they could bring him back for the last few episodes, maybe after a time skip or something, you know, the Walking Dead would end on the, I would, I would say it ended, you know, on the good note that I would want, you know, and Michonne come back as well, um. I wouldn't think he could have Rick without Michonne. Uh, but yeah, so uh, absolutely awesome. Again, I don't want to get my too, my hopes up too high. Uh, but yeah, okay, so awesome episode. 10 out of 10 for me. Let me know what you thought about it. If you have uh, seen it, of course. I know it's a big stink with the whole AMC Plus thing uh, where some people were like on the first episode of um, the season part two and then some people are on this episode for their newest episode. Um, I don't have AMC Plus. I watch it on a ripped website. I know some people would be like, oh, you're taking away from the views or whatever. The show's ending anyway, okay? Who cares? Uh, so if you want that, I'll leave it in the comments for you. Um, and yeah, leave a like. 
and I will see you uh, for next week's episode.